let the games begin. We shall call on Professor Frank Rennie to start the debate. Thank you. Um, if, uh, would you please move over to the podium for your deliveries? Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I, I feel I won't in insult your intelligence um, by guessing the result of this uh, the debate because you obviously know the answer before we start. Well, we have to go through the motions and, and, and humor the opposition. <laughs> I think there are three or four key things that you need to know about OER, Open Educational Resources. One is the ease of access that you can get from these. So by making educational resources open and freely available to everybody, we help to sort of eliminate the educational divide that separates those who can afford to get access to education and those who can't. So it's a form of democratization. It's a spreading out of ideas. And isn't that what education is supposed to be about in the first place? Secondly, it's about cost. As the title of the debate says, why reinvent the WACA? It's there already. People have done these things. Um, we can capitalize on the skills of our colleagues, even though we don't know who our colleagues are, um, and take things that they have and reuse them rather than having to do everything completely by ourselves. Thirdly, it's in the speed of access for these things. By using the collective brain power, or the collective energies of people who are involved in these different issues, we can then foreshorten the time it takes to prepare high quality educational material that's available to all. The speed, as we've seen over the last few days, has been reduced from something of the order of one year or six months to just a matter of weeks to get the rudiments of an idea together. Obviously, you can then uh, d elaborate upon that and develop it further in a period of time, but you can really shorten the time it takes to initiate new, new teaching material. And the beauty of that is it then leaves other time available to improve staff skills, to improve staff research base, to improve teaching skills and educational opportunities. So these three things, ease of access, cost, and the speed of it, are the key issues of OER. But it's also built upon the notion, I would suggest, is abstract communities of, of, of trust. Education is about trust. You trust your teacher to impart knowledge to your children. You trust your tutors that they are specialists in the idea that they are looking for. And that information is passed to you. A key attribute of online learning is building up trust between people who don't actually meet face to face. And that's done by email, by phones, by things like Facebook and discussions to build up this community of trust, which is what we're doing in the OER community. Really importantly though, this is the best thing that's happened since the invention of the book. Think about it. The invention of the book was, and printing, created the ability to write down the knowledge in somebody's head. So it immediately liberated communication from its immediate context. You no longer had to have the person who knew right in front of you. You could have it written down and read it in your own leisure. And that book could travel many hundreds or thousands of miles away from the original resource. It liberates it from its original context. That's what OERs are about. You can produce a photograph or a video clip for a particular purpose. You can make it available to anybody who wants to find it. When they find it by clever identification and tagging and so on, they can take these tags and then find the information they want for themselves and reuse it in their own context. Not necessarily in the same meaning as the original context, but to illustrate a similar or related point. That's the key thing. So it's democratization. When it's looking at photographs and video clips and so on, it promotes collective responsibility, collective ownership, rather than just elitism or exclusivity. Mass production is not necessarily a reduction in the quality. The size of OER are important, smaller rather than bigger, and the quality is important. But this is a new innovation. It will take time to bed down and settle down. And like all new innovations, the quality will improve as more and more people use it. 
The important thing to realize that OER liberates us from the constraints of overtight copyright that was written for an area in the past. Manipulated by elites who control information, who control education, who charge for books, who charge for resources, and make this available only to those who can pay. Elites have always resisted symbols of their elitism. And OERs are a symbol against that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Rennie. Our second, sorry, our, I, I will now introduce the leader of the negative team, Professor Martin Weller. I think all the stuff that Frank said is kind of true. You know, it's like no one's going to argue that OERs are a bad thing or they're evil. So my case is more that are they the, the right approach? So uh, this is a sign you can get in America, so it's no swearing, okay, no cursing. So I don't want anyone attacking me for making the anti-OER case. So I just uh, I don't necessarily believe all this, but I think you know. So I'm uh, we have a phrase playing devil's advocate. So it's my role to play devil's advocate here. Okay. So these are my main kind of arguments, right? Uh, sustainability. These big OER projects cost a lot of money to run, you know, and can we keep them going once the funding disappears? Have we got funding from the Hewlett Foundation to do open learning that's going to run out soon, and it costs us money to run that? Uh, lack of reuse, a lot of these things aren't actually being reused. There's a lot of stuff going up there, but people aren't taking it and reusing it. I think, as people found here today uh, in the project, reuse is actually quite hard. And often you're better off just starting from scratch. It's not easy just to take this stuff and reuse it. Uh, as we've also heard, there's a lot of uh, resistance from individuals and from institutions about releasing content. I mean, that doesn't mean we shouldn't fight against that, but we equally is the OER approach. We've got the right way to do that, and should, we shouldn't underestimate the kind of th the effort it would take to overcome that resistance. Uh, leave it to others is probably my biggest argument. Um, education isn't the best place to do this. If you look at all the good examples of uh, education or, or resources that people reuse, it's YouTube, it's Flickr, it's SlideShare. These weren't set up by universities; they're set up by commercial companies because they can move really quickly. You look at the, uh, all the stuff that's done by education, and uh, we had learning objects many years ago, some of you may remember learning objects, and we set up big learning object repositories with 14 pages of metadata to go on each object and stuff, and nobody ever used them. So we're not the best people to do this. Um, I think there's a kind of lack of evidence about whether it's pedagogically useful. We don't know how people are using it and studying it. We also, there's also a real lack of evidence about the economics of this stuff. It, it just, in a very blunt term, is there a kind of return on investment on this? I mean, we've got lots of ev uh, kind of anecdotal evidence that people find this stuff useful, and that's I'm sure that's true, but they might also equally find it useful if we flew out a tutor everywhere and gave them one-to-one -one tuition, but it doesn't mean that it's a kind of economically viable model. I think the cultural imperialism one is, is a quite a strong issue, actually, and it's quite a subtle one. Um, as one of my colleagues put it, uh, imagine if 10% um, of Chinese universities took one engineering lectures work from uh, MIT. That's an awful, that's a massive influence that one individual's in having over a whole kind of culture and a whole industry. Um, and it may be if the current OER, part, OER approach is the thing we use, it might only be that kind of well-off Western universities are the only people who can afford to do it. And so that this becomes a way of kind of imperialism and, and spreading that, that way of teaching and their thoughts kind of around the world. So everyone else then takes the work of these big universities. Um, the quality and depth issue, it comes up a lot, and I think it's kind of still up in the air. I mean, it's probably the weaker argument, but I think a lot of people do worry about this, I think, you know, about can you find the appropriate stuff for your subject area? Is it of the right quality? And that, how do we determine quality? You know, what is good quality in this, this area? Uh, and lastly, uh, when I was doing this talk, I, I put a call out on Twitter saying I'm, I need some anti-OER arguments, and so everyone come back with these good ideas for anti-OER arguments. So... And this is quite a good one, I thought, and quite a subtle one. And I think someone, I think one of the groups talked about it yesterday, um, is that a lot of the evidence we're getting, particularly through open learning, is that people don't tend to adapt the material we give them. They just take it and use it as it is. And there's a real danger there, I think, that what, y what happens is that you're just taking stuff and you're not going through the process of creating it or, or, or understanding it. And, and there's a kind of old adage that the best way to understand a subject is to teach it. Um, and so you're not learning about the subject, but even worse, you're not learning how to create effective learning materials. Because what we're doing is taking someone else's material and just sticking it up in your site and running it through. 
So I think there's a kind of real uh, danger of de-skilling or kind of deprofessionalizing people here by just giving them certain stuff that they just take and use. So um, my, I think the big arguments here for me that I think that the, OER, the current OER approach doesn't really address is that of sustainability, what happens when the money runs out, um, the lack of reuse and how hard it is, the thing that industry and commercial companies actually do it better than we do and kind of know how to move quickly, um, and the cultural imperialism and this kind of learning through creation. Those would be my big points that I think that we need uh, evidence for and backing up from, from the current OER approach. Thank you very much, Professor Martin Muller.